Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the first basketball game in the 2011-2012 season for the Middle Creek Mustangs. We're here coming to you live from Mustang Gymnasium. I'm Matt Kimball. I'll be doing play-by-play -play tonight. I'm joined by PJ Bellantoni. He'll be running color commentary tonight. We're facing off against the Fuquay Bengals. The, oh, the season opener here at home. This is Fuquay's third game of the season. We're, we're in for a great matchup here tonight. Last year, Middle Creek won the series, won all three games against Fuquay. And, you know, Fuquay is looking to get some revenge for, you know, losing all three games last season. And we beat them twice in football this season. That was huge, beating our down the street rivals. So, what do you think for tonight, PJ? Yeah, um, you know, beating them in football, you know, they're going to try to come back and for basketball and you know, just make it a good competition game. You know, Middle Creek, you know, missing one of their starting forwards, Nate Fleming, out with a broken foot. You know, it's going to be tough with the size, but I'm sure we'll, um, we'll come through with it. Yeah, and I believe we have Kamari Bobbitt, number 32, is filling in for him tonight. He was on JV last year, so we're going to have some new, we have a lot of new faces here on Varsity Night because um, Dante Davis, Leon Hargrove, and Garrett Latham all graduated last year. Garrett was our top rebounder. Leon was our top in steals, assists, points, you name Everything. it. He was <laughs> he was just our all-around best player last year. Mustangs went 22-5, and five, had an outstanding season before, unfortunately being ousted from the playoffs by East Chapel Hill. But we're in for a new season of basketball here. Creek Crazies are pumped, coming out in force and outstanding atmosphere as we get ready for the tip-off tonight. Brandon Hooks is facing off against number 21, Diedrich Bird, and Brandon wins the tip, tipping it back to Marvin Wilson, who gets it off to John Moore, who's bringing it up the floor, slowing it down, looking for a man. Dumps it off to Marvin, and Marvin's dribbling around, looking for an open man. Passes it to Hooks. And, you know, let's see if, uh, you know, Middle Creek can get this offense going started uh, pretty early in this game. They don't want to get, um, you know, no, they want to get a lot of points on the board in the first half and, you know, play good on the defensive side. And Marvin, Marvin Wilson out there at point guard, John Moore, Quentin Ray, and Brandon Hooks, four of the five guys that are in right now. The fifth guy is Kamari Bobbitt, like we talked about earlier. But four of those five guys got a lot of playing time last year. Quentin started last year on varsity, as did Brandon, I believe. Yes, Brandon um, did. And John did, and I believe John, John started as well. When he wasn't playing football, he was starting. Yeah, that's right. John and Quentin, both two sport athletes out there. Also, Garrett yeah. last year. Yeah, Garrett was a two sport athlete last year as well. And we're going to, hopefully, we won't miss him too much, but he was our top rebounder, almost eight rebounds a game. That's going to be a big hole to fill, and it's going to be up to Kamari to fill that void down there in the post. Yeah, Kamari is a very talented player. I know I've, I've played basketball with him a lot. And he's just, he can score, he can rebound, block, he can do it all. He's an all-around player. As you talk about him, he dribbles around a couple defenders and he hits the layup. As you're talking about how talented he is, he gets the first couple points for the Mustangs, dribbling through a couple Fuquay defenders and getting the easy layup. And they call five and seconds on Fuquay. So, silly mistake right off the bat. Marvin Wilson's going to bring it in for the Mustangs. And it's... You know, a little bit of inexperience, not necessarily because these guys haven't played varsity before, just because they haven't played uh, the squad together. Um, in a, this is their first actual game together, the starting five. So we'll see how they do tonight. As Marvin Wilson puts up the three, and it's no good. Rebounded by Bird, and it's going to go out of bounds. Fuquay ball. And Bird... That's number 21, Diedrich Bird. is the younger brother of Dominique Bird, who was the uh, leading scorer for the Bengals last year. And they're going to miss him a little bit this season. He was putting up 16 points a game last season. Yeah, he, was, he was one of their, I think he was their best player, if not one of their best players. Brandon Hooks with a steal goes up for the dunk and lays it in. Nothing gets you pumped like a dunk. That kind of rhymed unintentionally. Yeah, that's but. a little crowd start right there for the Creek Crazies. And Creek Crazies are just out in force like usual. Another steal by the Mustangs, but an errant pass by Hooks intended for Quentin Ray, and it's going to go out of bounds. Yeah, they're getting started off, you know, pretty quick, pretty quick tonight. You know, the quick four points and playing good defense. 
And Fuquay, this is not their first game of the season. They, they're one and one through their first two games. They beat West Johnson in the season opener, but lost to Fuquay. So looking to go up two and one on the season, but it's not going to be an easy game at all here in Mustang Gymnasium against Middle Creek, one of the toughest teams that try nine every year in and year out when it comes to basketball. Coach Kushner always puts together a good squad, and we'll see how he, do, he does with this, this new team. Yeah, you know, we always have good players here that come to our school, like, you know, Garius Adams or Tom Tankowitz from our past couple years that have gone on to play D1 basketball, like, you know, Tom yeah. and Garius and Kip Kelly, and the list goes on and on. And Devontae Lee is at the line. He missed his first free throw and misses his second as well. Brandon hooks with a rebound, dumping it off to John Moore, who's going to bring it up the floor. Drives inside, cuts through the defense, and puts it up for two. Put in Middle Creek up six to zero. Devontae Lee on the quick pass, moves it up the floor and gets Fuquay on the board for the first time tonight. Six to two, Middle Creek leading. And they called, uh, I don't know what that was. It was uh, out of bounds? It, it was It was a foul on Middle Creek. I don't, I'm don't. i not sure what it was, but it's gonna be the bangle ball. It was an inbound violation. And you talk about Tankowitz, we, we just watched the JV game and his younger brother is on the younger JV brother. squad as well. So looking at him, Hopefully he has a bright future here at Middle Creek. He, he looked pretty good. Yeah, he did. He not as tall as his other brother, but he can sure shoot like him. Yeah, if he if he gets a growth spurt, he could be real dangerous. Marvin Wilson with a steal, going up for the layup, and it's blocked. And that's Fuquay is called for the foul, and Marvin Wilson's going to go to the line for two. Yeah, they thought it was a kick ball on Marvin Wilson, but uh, the ref said no. And Fuquay coach is real irritated with that call, but it's against Fuquay, and Wil Wilson is. A very accurate shooter. He's one of our best shooters from behind the arc as well. John Moore and Wilson are both excellent three-point shooters as well as from the free throw line. Wilson misses his first attempt, though. Yeah, as you said, that too was just a yeah, bad coincidence. I, I jinxed it. <laughs> Wilson lining up for his second attempt, and it bounces out, rebounded by Kamari. Wilson lays it up from behind the arc, misses another one. He's 0 for 2 from behind the arc. He just hasn't gotten the groove yet tonight. And foul on Bobbitt. It's going to be Fuquay ball. Middle Creek up 6-2, 5-16 to go here in the first period. Lee bringing it up to the court for the Bengals. Driven around the outside, dumps it off. Cameron Avery back to Bird. Devontae Lee pump fakes. Good defense by Bobbitt. Back to Bird, and it's stolen by Brandon Hooks, who dumps it off to John Moore. And it's a foul. It's a travel foul on Brandon Hooks. Questionable call. He's got the steal, and then dumped it off to John Moore. But the ref uh, felt that he traveled there. Uh, so Fugue is going to get the ball back. That's all right. Look, he's just trying to, you know, discard that mental error and just playing good defense. Hey, Middle Creek's doing excellent defense tonight. They've gotten four steals. Bird outside the arc, back outside, and number four, Adam Fecto. He, and he's the leading scorer for the Bengals this season. Rebound by the Bengals, slowing it down. Everybody was on the opposite opposite side of the court. But they got the steal on the Devontae Lee bringing it in it's inside, makes a bad pass, loses control of the ball, and it's going to be a timeout. No, it's going to be a, a group substitution. A group substitution. <laughs> I'm a little rusty on my basket, my basketball. They, just, they brought in a whole other starting five. It's an interesting strategy by the Bengals. Yeah. You don't really see that a lot in high school sports. And number five, Ricky Ferguson in the game for the first time tonight. He's one Played of the star football. running backs yeah. for Fuquay's football team as they get it inside, put up the easy, easy two. Like, yeah, Ricky Ferguson had a great season on the football team. Along. Had him and Carlton Bridges in the backfield. Excellent duo, very dangerous. Quentin Ray going in, or uh, excuse me, that was Bobbitt going up for the layup and he missed. Rebounded by Fuquay. 
Those are some bright shoes that he has and some <laughs> socks to go along with that. And, and uh, Keith Keith yeah. Fitzgerald also has neon, their highlighter colored cleats. I think it's to distract the other players for their... Yeah, whatever works. Yeah. Nate Otto in the game for the first time tonight along with Fitzgerald. They were both substituted in. Ferguson brings it up the floor showcasing his speed that made him so dangerous on the football field. And number 31, Michael Varian lays it up for Fuquay. Ties up the game at 6. 3.40 to go here in the first period. Nate Otto on the outside. Quentin Ray puts it up and it falls just short. Nick foul on Fuquay. Push. It was on Middle Creek. No, it was on Quentin Ray. Oh. It was the weird direction that he pointed in. Kind of misled us. It's throwing me off tonight. <laughs> Inbounds pass to Ferguson. Back to Evan McNeil, who also on the football team is the quarterback for the Bengals. Had a good season. Ferguson looks a, a little smaller when he's not in his pads. Yeah. A little shorter than the rest of them. Yeah, but that didn't stop me. Again, no, he had a great year out there. Dumps it off to Ferguson inside to 32. Hezekiah Jones. <laughs> and it's put back up by McNeil. Putting the Bengals in the lead 8-6 to six for the first time tonight. And now it's a timeout. So both teams, it's a very close game right now. Fuquay up 8-6. to six. Middle Creek's playing great defense right now. You know, we have about four or five steals, I believe, right now. And they just got to keep that up. They're behind a little bit, but nothing they can't come back. Yeah, you know, they just got to get the tempo going back their way, play more uh, aggressive offense, take it to the hole, and maybe, you know, go to the free throw line up a little bit and shoot, score from there and uh, just play good defense. And, you know, Middle Creek has to take advantage of their guard play because they're a little bit smaller than some of the other teams. You know, you've got Brandon Hooks down there playing center but he's a little bit smaller than your average center and also Kamar, Kamar is pretty big but you know a little bit smaller down in the post that might hurt us against some of the other teams it has it, ha, it I don't think it's going to show tonight because Fuqua is not a very big team yeah you but know, yeah, Brandon's about six four Kamar is about six foot six foot one mm -hmm. you know we're a little bit undersized this year because of the the seniors leaving last year but I think we'll manage Quinn Ray passes it to Fitzgerald inside and it's going to be a foul. Fuquay ball. We got a jump ball. Jump ball. Uh, it's going to be Fuquay ball, it looks like. Yeah, it's Fuquay's ball. McNeil looking for the inbounds pass. Nobody open. And swatted out of bounds by Nate Otto. You got McNeil, like Garrett did last year, the quarterback for the team playing basketball. You see a lot of that in the high school sports, you know, the yeah. two-sport athletes just, you know, try to keep in shape. And, you know, some of them are actually really good at the sports, both no, of them. No doubt. McNeil receives the inbound pass, driving up the court against Bobbitt, or excuse that's Fitzgerald. It lays up, lays it up, and it's no good. Rebounded by Bobbitt. He's going to bring it up. Dumps it off to Wilson, looking for an open man. He's got Otto open on the arc, outside of the arc. Gets it to Quentin Ray, pump fakes. Back out to Marvin. Just taking their time, setting up, setting up their passes, setting up the play. Inside to Quentin Ray, back out to Wilson, who is wide open and drills the three. Putting Mustangs up nine to eight with a one point lead under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. And he's getting a little antsy after hitting that three. He just gotta, he just gotta settle down a little bit and just you know continue to play defense. And one in one of the games against Fuquay last year, Marvin had had some issues with some of the, not just Marvin, but some of our players and some of Fuquay's players went at it a little bit. I just remember Marvin being one of our players. Was that was that at Fuqu it was at Fuquay? Right? No, it it was here. We did a sports block broadcast about it, oh. and um, it, it it got a little. They kind of went at it a little bit verbally and whatnot. So hopefully looking for a clean game here tonight by both sides. John Moore dribbling around Ferguson. Dumps it off to Kevin Clare, who's in the game for the first time tonight. Out to Rayshon King, who's also just come in. Nick Bennett lays up the three and misses. 
And Keith Fitzgerald lays up the shot, but misses and goes for the steal. And it's going to be caught out on Fuquay, Middle Creek ball. So we see Kevin, Claire, Nick Bennett, and Rayshon King all in the game for the first time tonight. And John Moore, Keith Fitzgerald also in for the Mustangs. Yeah, you know, two more football players just, you know, on the game right now. You know, Rayshon King, you know, just an excellent hustler. He can do it all, again, like everybody else on this team. Rebound, score, shoot. I mean, he can do it all. Mm -hmm. Another one of those great two-sport athletes that you talk about as Diedrich Bird getting ready to inbound it for the Bengals, looking for an open man. Good defense by Calaire and Rayshon. And it goes off the hands of a Fuquay player. And it's gonna looks looks like it's gonna be Mustang ball. So we have um that? Ray Ray is taking it out. Ray, okay. And you know we have uh, a small lineup going in now. We just have mm -hmm. Brandon Hooks playing with uh, primarily three four guards. So we'll see how that plays and how the game goes on after that. Pass to John Moore who lays it up and just over the rim. Goes out of bounds, gonna be Fuquay ball. 106 to play here in the first quarter. Mustangs up nine to eight, clinging to that slim one point lead. Lee's gonna bring it up the court for the Bengals. Out to Hartzell. In. Lays it up and it's in for the Bengals. It's number 33, Jake Hartzell. Tipped it in, putting the Bengals up again. Nick Bennett, pump fakes. Back to Kevin. Inside to Ray. Fights for con control. John Moore drives along the baseline and. I'm not sure what the call was there. I think it was, they called the offensive three seconds. I'm not sure on who though. It didn't it didn't really look like anybody was down there. Long pass up to Fectu. Bird. Lee holding the ball. Lee drives inside the lane, lays it up, and no good. Long pass from John Moore up to Kevin Kallaire, who goes up for the layup. And it's in. And one. And he yeah, and one. What? Yeah, he got the he got the points and the foul. And he gets to shoot one free throw. As, oh, they're they're arguing that you know it could have been a charge. I mean that could have went either way, but the ref made the call that he saw and he's shooting a free throw. Claire's free throw is up and it, it spins out of the rim. Mustangs go back on defense. Free throws have been a struggle today uh, yeah. already. We've only played a couple games. Um, a couple minutes, excuse me. Hartzell puts it up, misses, but draws the foul. Same play down there. Yeah, have we, I don't think we've made a free throw yet. I believe um, we, had, we had Marvin go to the line for two. He missed them both? I think, I think he missed them both, and then Kevin yeah. missed that one, so... That's as close as this game is right now. And you're gonna need all the points. Yeah, you never let points go away. Hartzell at the line, takes his first shot, first and only shot, and it's in. Putting the Bengals up by t two now. It wasn't the prettiest looking shot, but it went in. Fuquay leading 13 to 11 right now. 7.8 seconds to go in the first quarter. Ray Sean King looking to inbounds. It gets Nick Bennett. Bring it. Who's bringing it up the court? He's got John Moore open, and it rolls out of bounds. And referees are going to say it bounced off a Fuquay player. John Moore is going to inbound it for the Mustangs. Two referees are actually going to confer. See whose foot it bounced off of. And they're going to give it to Fuquay. So Fuquay ball now. 3.2 seconds left to go here in the first quarter. Bird looking for an inbounds. Good defense knocked away by Quinton. And 
foul called on Quentin. And he knows it. So they have you know two point seconds to just chuck up a full court shot and you know see if it goes in. This is this is a, a very close game and it's a stark contrast to what we saw in two of the three games last year. One of the game the last one was only a four point victory by Mustangs as number twenty three um, Cameron Averett lays up the long shot and misses as the first quarter comes to a close. But the other two, the, you know, the last one was only a four-point victory by Middle Creek, but the other two were by about 20-point were about victories each. I mean, they were very commanding victories. We looked very dominant. So this yeah. is looking more like that final, that third game of the season against Fuquay than the first two. Yeah, I remember last year we were at Fuquay. You know, I think, did we go into overtime or was it, it was, we were at Fuquay. I know Marvin hit like three three-pointers and then came and hit a couple free throws. I think we went to overtime, and that's when we pulled out like a five-point win in, in Fuquay last year. Yeah. We, yeah, we've had some interesting games with Fuquay, yeah. football and basketball. It's Nothing's ever guaranteed against Fuquay. You know, our, our close rivals from just down the road. And our rivals in pretty much everything. Yeah. Football, basketball, you name it. And we're, all, we're also got a game at Garner on Friday. That's going to be a packed game. Yep. I know it's going to be real intense I think over it's there. It's only a scrimmage. On, it's only a scrimmage? I, I thought it was so. a full game. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'll find out for you, though. I th I'm pretty I was, sure it's. Because yeah. they, were, they were worried it was going to be moved because Garner's playing in the state title game on Saturday. Um, Marvin Wilson lays up the three and misses, but they, some of the players were worried they were going to move that due to the state title game because they really want to play Garner. I know they were supposed to play it before that because they were supposed to play Word of God. Yeah, I heard about that. that. Get, yeah, the coach from Word of God just didn't want to play it because he thought that we were supposed to, they were supposed to play here, and that all got confused. Right. Two missed shots by Fuquay, rebounded by Middle Creek. Wilson has it back to Quentin Ray. John Moore has it outside the arc. Back to Marvin, back to Quentin Ray, who lays up the three, misses. But John Moore gets the rebound, trying to go for the layup, and it's blocked. But he got fouled. Yeah, he got hit on the block shot. So, yeah, so John's going to go the line. Yeah. Jordan Du Bois. Yeah, Jordan Du Bois. John's first shot is clean through the rim. That's our first made free throw. John. Lining up for his second attempt. It's up and it's good. Swishes through the net. John two for two on his free throws. Tying, tying the game up at 13. 7 18 left to go in the first half. Pass was blocked by Fitzgerald but recovered by the Bengals. McNeil driving in the lane and gets called for the charge for running over Bobbitt. So Mustang ball. It was excellent defense, you know. Middle Creek was one of the best teams at that last year are taking charges, and they're showing it already today. Shows good coaching by Kushner. Always, like we said earlier, always put together a good squad. So still playing. We're playing with an even smaller lineup as Fitzgerald lays up the easy two points, putting the Mustangs in the lead. But you have four, uh, three guards and two forwards, but Fitzgerald and Bobbitt are smaller forwards, like we said as Fuquay puts up the two, tying the game at 15, so back and forth here as Bobbitt's three-point attempt rims out. Rebounded by McNeil, but it's stolen by Fitzgerald. Bobbitt goes up for the layup and is called, and McNeil is called for the defensive foul. I don't know why we're shooting so many three-pointers. I mean, we can just be taking the taking better shots and just trying to go to the hole. I mean, instead of you know just trying to chuck up three-pointers when we don't need that. That's where uh, as Keith Bobbitt's first Kamari attempt. Bobbitt. Oh, sorry, Kamari Bobbitt. Excuse me. Middle Creek is one for eight from behind the arc, and Fuquay is zero for four. So nobody really 
neither team is doing good from behind the arc tonight as Kamari Bobbitt makes his second attempt. 17 to 15 here, Middle Creek leading. Bad pass out of bounds for Fuquay. It's gonna turn the ball over. But that, that's something Dante Davis excelled at last year was going to the hole and just cutting through other teams. He, he never had any problems just you know driving in. He was one of our best scorers last year and our, one of our best defenders too. I mean, he played mm -hmm. excellent full court defense. And really good half court defense is what Krishna said. You know, he was one of our best full court presses that we ever had. Couple missed shots by the Mustangs as McNeil gets the rebound and brings it up the court. And it's bad pass stolen by Fitz uh, Bobbitt. And Quentin Ray goes up for the dunk and misses. And he's not going to be happy with himself for that. And Fuquay students are going to give him grief about that. It looks like the ball just like popped out from yeah, underneath him. Just, just slipped out of his hand. Maybe it's a little sweaty. Got a little anxious. But just got to shake it off. Inbounded to Ferguson. Over to McNeil. Inside to number 34, Jordan the boy. Good defense by Fitzgerald. But they, did, they did call a foul on Keith Fitzgerald for that one. So he will be shoot, he will be shooting one and one. So he gets one free throw, and if he makes this, he gets another. And both teams with a lot of turnovers. Middle Creek has nine, and Fuquay has seven already in this game. So playing a little sloppy here tonight. They gotta they gotta do better at that. You know, you can't they can't keep turning the ball over like that. Yeah, you know, this is Middle Creek's first game, so I I think they're just trying to get used to the feel of you know each other and you know the gameplay of you know varsity basketball for some of these people and no doubt. <laughs> Jordan the boy makes his first attempt and number 24 Dale Parker is in the game uh, interesting stories yeah we'll, we'll continue on that in a minute the boy misses his second attempt rebounded by Fuquay and it goes off the shoe of uh, it was either John or uh, Kamari but it's going to be Fuquay ball but number 24 Dale Parker made uh, he was doing a lot of trash talking on Twitter these past couple days and got some players, Middle Creek players, riled up. And so we're going to have to see if he lives up to the, the big, if he can walk the walk because he, he's he can, been talking the talk a lot. If he can score the 40 points that he promised. <laughs> Not likely, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to see. He promised 40 points, really? Yep. That, that's interesting. Marvin Wilson lays it up from behind the arc and drills it. Finally getting that three-point shot he wanted. And Dale Parker with the air ball on his first shot. Not, not, how not he what he wanted. Yeah. Not, not what he wanted to do on his first shot. Not, not at all. And he's going to get a lot of grief from the Creek Crazies tonight after all the trash talking he's been doing. But that's that's yeah. the flip side of it. You know, you do a lot of trash talking, you got to you gotta back it up. That. Yeah, you got to back it up for sure. Pass to McNeil inside, and it's blocked by Ray, who came from behind and is called for the foul. McNeil going to the line. And it looks like Marvin Wilson's limping off the court right now from the bench, so we'll see. We'll get some news on that in the later That's on. That's not good. Marvin's not good. one of our best three-point shooters. And players. And players in general, right? McNeil hits his first attempt, pulling the Bengals within one, 20 to 19 here. Middle Creek leading, 4.56 to go in the first half. Very close game. Got a lot of back and forth here. A lot of turnovers by both teams as well. And what? not a lot of success from behind the arc. McNeil misses his second attempt, rebounded by Ray. And Calaire is going to bring it up the court for the Mustangs. Jukes out Ferguson, drives inside the lane. And he's going to draw the foul, go into the line. No, they're going to call it out of bounds. Oh. And he said before the shot. So still Mustang ball, not going to the line. Because it was not a shooting foul. Nate Otto inbounding it to Kamari. Ned Otto gets it in the corner and lays it up 
and he is one for one for his three-point attempts tonight, I believe. Yep, that was the first time he has ever, that's his first varsity points. That's a big moment for him right yeah. now. And bad pass. Kamari's gonna get it, and he loses the ball. And Fuquay loses the ball. Quint, uh, Rayshon King has it in the lane. Gets a rebound after a missed Kamari shot. And foul by Fuquay. So we saw three turnovers in the course of 20 seconds right there. I mean, just a lot of back and forth. Kamari got it, brought it up the court, couldn't control the ball. He loses it, then Fuquay loses it to Rayshon, and a few missed shots later, and a foul later, he's at the line. So a lot of back and forth right there. Yeah, you know, you're talking about the hustle before, like I said, there he showed it, you know, yet again. Ray at the line misses his first attempt. We have been struggling a lot. You know, both teams have been struggling a lot from the line tonight. I can think, I, you know, I feel like Kushner's going to really harp on that in practice this week. And in the locker room in four minutes. And yeah, four minutes to go here in the f first half. Like you said, PJ, Mustangs up 23 to 19. And Ray's second attempt is a miss. Kamari gets the rebound but misses his putback attempt. And Fuquay bringing it up the court. Misses his shot. Rebounded by Kamari, bringing it up. Goes for the layup. Misses. Rebounded by Nate Bennett, who makes the bad pass, trying to hit Ray under the basket and just can't hit him. Yeah, it was a good idea, but I think with the pass was a little bit too fast, and I think Ray was ready for that. Hezekiah Jones bringing it in to Ferguson, defended by Kaler. I don't know what they're chanting. I think they're chanting Fuquay Bengals or something, oh. something of that nature. Cameron Avert drives inside, goes for the layup, goes up against Nate Otto, who draws the foul. Excellent job by Nate taking the charge yeah, and drawing you know, the foul. Like I said before, you know, they were one of the best teams last year taking charges, and they've already had two this far. And we're getting a little bit of separation. This four-point difference is one of the bigger, the biggest leads that the Mustangs have had tonight. It's not big, but I mean that's how close this game has been. Kevin Clare bringing it up the court for the Mustangs. John Moore, Nick Bennett, Kamari, and Nate Otto all in. Nick Bennett lays it up from behind the arc and gets it in on the bank shot. 26 to 19, Mustangs are leading the Bengals here. Three and a half minutes to go in the first half. Lee drives inside and is fouled by John. I believe foul was on John. Yeah, foul was on John Moore for the shove. Lee's going to go to the line. Oh. Or they're going to take it out of bounds. I didn't think it was a shooting foul, but... Uh, oh, they have, they're over the foul limit. That's why. Already in the first half. Yep. <laughs> Lee's first and only... A well, he gets two. First attempt is good. Mustangs still leading 26 to 20. Lee looking for his second attempt, which bounces out. Kamara gets the rebound, dumps it off to Quentin Ray, who brings it up the court. Nate Bennett takes the shot from outside the three-point line and misses. Rebounded by Evan McNeil. Who's gonna Evan McNeil's gonna shoot from behind the three-point line and makes it. Narrowing the Middle Creek lead to three points, 26 to 23. Middle Creek still leading, but just hanging on barely. Kevin Kaler driving inside the lane, goes up and misses. Cameron Avery bringing it up. Ricky Burson jays it up from behind the arc and misses. Nate Otto attempting the rebound. They're going to call over the back on that one. Just a little bit too much of a, a push from the Fuquay offense. Two forty-one to go here in the first half. Middle Creek hanging on to the three-point lead, twenty-six to twenty-three here. And both both teams are playing well. And it's it's looking like a first game should you know getting used to uh, game, game playing as a team and you know, getting used to new players, new 
mean, most of these players on the court right now, with the exception of Nate Otto and Kamari, have played varsity basketball last year at some point. And Nate is at the line, misses his only attempt. Kamari gets the rebound, though, puts it up, and misses. Fitzgerald went for the putback and missed as well. Lee gets the rebound, brings it up, and it's his shot attempt is or his pass attempt was blocked by Nate Otto, who flew from the other side of the court. Ex just an excellent hustle by him on that play. You know, he was he took that free throw and went end to end to block that pass. Two and a half minutes to go here in the first half. McNeil looking to inbound it. Hits an open, open man. And Missed shot by Fuquay. That was number 31, Michael Varian. And Hartzell is going to go to the line, number 33 for Fuquay. That's Jake Hartzell. And, you know, talking about, you know, these these players right here that played JV last year, Kamari did play some varsity last year for them in the Glaxo Smith Klein holiday tournament. So, I mean, he does have some varsity experience. Hartzell's second attempt is a miss. Rebounded by Brandon Hooks, who dumps it off to Kevin Kallaire. Back to Kallaire, calling the play, getting everybody set. Nate Otto laying it up from behind the arc, misses. Rebounded by Fitzgerald. Foul called on Middle Creek. A call on Fitzgerald for the push. The ref said the referee saying he pushed to get that rebound. Got a little too physical out there. So now Fuqua has two shots. Which they, they have more than ten fouls. I just and, you know, coupled with the turnovers, you know, turnovers and fouls are just killing us right now. We got the lead, but it's only a two-point lead right now, 26 to 24. Fuqua is slowly but surely closing the gap. Hartzell is at the line once again, getting ready for his first attempt. And it falls short. And I don't know if you can hear it, if our audience can hear it, but this gym is very loud on free throws. The Creek Crazies and the crowd are getting really loud. And Hartzell drills his second attempt, 25 to 26. Fuquay down by a point. And Creek Crazies came out in force tonight almost filled to the top uh, they have a little section of the bleachers big student section tonight got the, the white out slash orange hush out going everybody wearing their orange hush t-shirts yeah that is that's referencing to Fuquay's orange crush little play slogan. on little uh, having a little fun making fun of the uh, yeah. Fuquay student section I'm wearing mine actually at the moment I didn't get one. Ferguson driving inside the lane and misses the layup. Kevin Clare with a rebound, bringing it up the court. Takes, uh, passes it off to Brandon who gets the little sh the jumper and is fouled as he shoots. It was a hard foul by Fuqua. Yeah, he did a good job to convert that too with the, you know, great concentration on that play. The Fuqua defender came from behind. I'm just gonna give him a little, uh, little brush on the shoulder. 126 to go in the first half. Middle Creek up 28 to 25. Brandon Hooks at the line. Shooting one. The the Mustangs big man drills it, extending the Mustangs lead to four points now. 126 to go here in the first half. Inbounded by McNeil to lead and back to McNeil. Who's gonna McNeil's gonna bring it up the court. Trying to dribble around Bennett, dumps it off to Lee inside to number 31 Varian, who misses his shot and it's rebounded by Calaire bringing it up the court. Bennett in the corner dumps it off to Ray, who gets the layup. Under a minute to go here in the first half. That was a nifty little move by Ray right there. It, it was. He spun around the Fuquay defender. 
Lee trying to get around Kalera, and it's stolen by uh, Kamari Bobbitt, and he's going to dunk it. That's a crowd pleaser right there. Yeah, it is. 40 seconds of counting to go here. If you're just joining us, Middle Creek is up 33 to 25. Playing, playing pretty well right now. They still could uh, work on their turnovers and fouls. And, you know, you know their three-point shots and their free throws as well. A, lo a lot of little things to work yep. on. Nothing that can't be improved. No doubt. As McNeil tries to put, put the short, uh, short shot up and he misses, Middle Creek's just going to hold the ball for the remaining five seconds before taking the sh final shot. Nick Bennett driving inside, misses the layup. Last ditch effort by Michael Varian. And the buzzer sounds and that is the first half. Middle Creek with the eight point lead, 33 to 25 here. Good her first half of basketball. Opening night for the 2011-2012 basket men's basketball season. You're watching the sports block and we will be right back. And we're back from halftime, ladies and gentlemen. If you're just joining us, we're coming to you live from Mustang Gymnasium, Middle Creek, playing the Fuquay Bengals tonight. Middle Creek has the lead, 33 to 25. And what do you think of the first half, PJ? Um, the first half I thought was pretty good for both teams. You know, they just need to cut down some of the turnovers and some of the sloppy shots that they've taken. Long pass by John Moore to Quentin Ray, who makes the easy layup, converts that easy two points. But uh, back to what you were saying. Yeah, you know, they just need to cut down on some of the three pointers they've taken. Um, they, um, you know, they've only made you know like they've only made three shots from three pointers, and um, you know they need to get better at shooting free throws too. I mean, they missed a lot of missed opportunities in uh, the free throw department, and you know they just need to capitalize on those when they get them. I mean, free throws, you know, there's it's just one point at a time. But if you, I mean, those missed free throws add up over the course of the game. I mean, that's going to be in a game as close as this one. That's part, that might come back to bite the Mustangs. So Fuquay with a short two points. Middle Creek ball. John Moore is going to inbound it from right in front of the Creek Crazy section. I would, I would hate to be a Fuquay player having to inbound it from yeah. right there. That's like being in uh, Cameron Indoor Stadium with uh, yeah. all the Cameron crazies. You have everybody yelling next to your head. And Marvin Wilson is back in the game. Passes it off to Brandon Hooks, who lays it up for two points. But uh, Marvin Wilson folded his ankle a little bit uh, earlier in the game. I talked to him at halftime. He was stretching it out. Says he feels good. He's ready to play the second half. And you see him back on the court. Going full speed, taking it up the court right now as we speak. Passes it to Kamari, who lays up the two. And it's an and one, I believe. Yeah, that's an and one. So Bob it with one shot. And the foul is on number 33, Jake Hartzell. Hartzell's a big body out there for Fuquay. He's very big and he's very tall. It's coming off the court right now. Uh, timeout, excuse me. So teams are collecting their thoughts right now. So you, you know, as we take a look at some of the free throws from the first half, both teams uh, only made six of them. Fuquay attempted 13, Middle Creek attempted 12. So about the same from the free throw line. I mean, not very good, only 50% by each yeah. team. Not what they're looking to do here. And Middle Creek's winning the, the rebound battle. Six defensive rebounds to Fuquay's one. So you know, Fuquay is going to want to rebound the ball a little better. Yeah, they, they've seemed to rebound the ball on offense a lot better than they have on defense. You know, with, you know, number 33 getting a couple offensive boards. I mean, they've seemed to want it more on offense than defense. Bobbitt's shot is a little short and is no good. Rebounded by Bird and number and Averitt's bad pass. He thought it went out of bounds and was kicking himself, but uh, got to get his head back in the game. Lee defended by Quentin Ray. Dumps it off to number four. Adam Fechtow. Marvin Wilson. Whoa. 
and Bechtel kicks the ball on accident. Right, right. He might have done that on purpose, try to you know prevent the easy two points. Either it, way, it good was defense. with a little force. Yeah. <laughs> It was either way good defense. Quentin Ray trying to inbound it and uh, pass complete to Bobbitt. Pass it outside to John Moore who drives inside. Shot is blocked. Rebounded by Bobbitt whose put back attempt falls short. Avert bringing it up. And a bad pass into the hands of Brandon Hooks. Pass it up to Quentin Ray who goes up for the layup. Going against Avert and... Quentin is uh, wanting that charge, or not wanting that charge, one of the uh, defensive foul. He, he did get it. So he'll be shooting two free throws. As Fuqua is going to do the five man defensive uh, substitution here. It's an interesting tactic. We've seen the music a couple times here as Quentin Ray drills his first free throw attempt as that substitution is implemented. You have all five guys are coming off for the Bengals. Um, one of the reasons they did do that is um, number 23 for them has four fouls, and you are only allowed five fouls in high school, just like uh, college basketball. And Ray's second attempt is good, putting the Mustangs up. Got a very comfortable lead right now, 41-27, and they've been quietly building that lead up since halftime. And it was close. It was only eight-point lead at halftime, and now they're up by. 14, so good job by the Mustangs. As McNeil lays it up for two points, 29 for Fuquay. Down 41 to 29 here. Quentin Ray passes to Marvin Wilson inside the Bobbitt, who gets the short jumper. 5.22 left to go in the third quarter. Ferguson's going to bring it up, dumps it off to Dubois. Out to Varian, stolen, oh, attempted steal by Quentin Ray, but Varian did a good job of holding on to the ball, maintaining possession, and Quentin Ray's called for the foul. It was like a, I don't know what happened there, just like he landed on him and it was they, just, I think it was just in the scuffle for the ball. Yeah. He got, Quentin got a call for the foul. McNeil looking to inbound it, looking for an open man. Hits a wide, wide open. Uh, Hezekiah Jones who misses what, what was a gimme as Marvin Wilson lays it up a wide open Marvin Wilson lays it up from behind the arc and drills it and we saw Jones for Fuquay miss it a minute ago he was wide open and he, he should have made that he's going to kick himself for that one no doubt Ferguson bringing it up the court dumps it off to Dubois bad pass falls into the hands of Marvin Wilson but Wilson can't control the ball Varian tries to take a shot and it slips out of his hands and you see Evan McNeil out there just trying to tell his team to calm down and just you know trying to gather their heads and making some silly mental mistakes right now. Varian looking for an open man dumps it off to Ferguson behind him. Ferguson's got a good defense by Bobbitt. McNeil driving against John Moore puts it up and misses. So John Moore being called for that foul, so McNeil will shoot two free throws. 4.25 left to go here in the third quarter. Middle Creek leading 46 to 29. McNeil at the line. Misses his first attempt. Both teams struggling with free throws. And his second attempt is also a miss. Rebounded by Bobbitt. John Moore is going to bring it up the court. And Marvin's, Marvin's going to slow it down. Long pass to Bobbitt on the outside. Gets to Quentin Ray who fakes the drive. Passes it out to Marvin whose three-pointer attempt is just short. And Fuquay gets the rebound. McNeil brings it up. Ferguson pump fake and back, makes a bad pass and Fuquay gets the ball back on a turnover by Brandon Hooks and Brandon Hooks is getting real physical right there he's going to have to watch that can't get too angry 
Marvin got the steal, then lost control again. So, yeah, Fuqua makes a bad pass out of bounds. So, in the matter of, you know, that past 30 seconds, that was a hectic 30 seconds. Four turnovers by both teams, just back and forth. Neither team, they're just kind of getting ahead of themselves a little bit. Can't control the ball, can't hold on to it. Yeah, they just got to slow the tempo down a little bit and just play it slow. I mean, there's no shot clock, so you don't have to worry about you know, the possession that you have. I mean, just take it slow and make it take a good shot. Bobbitt driving inside, nothing doing, dumps it off to Ray in the outside. Ray makes a bad pass, but it's recovered by Brandon, whose shot is a miss. And Kushner's conferring with Marvin and Quentin a little bit, trying to get their heads together. And Brennan's going to go to the line after being fouled. Brandon's first shot is good, putting the Mustangs up 48 to 29 with 3:14 left to go in this third quarter. Looks ready for his second shot, which is up and bounces in. Mustangs with a 19-point lead here. McNeil bringing it up the court and. Middle Creek's looking to do a, a mass substitution as well, bringing all five guys out. As uh, I believe that was Varian's, yeah, Varian's shot was no good. McNeil telling him to use his head and be smarter about his shot selection because that may, may not have been a shot he should have taken. No, it shouldn't have been a shot he should have taken. He should have just, you know, slow it down a little bit, you know, set their play up and, you know, take a better shot. We're seeing that by both teams, you know, just making poor shot selection, taking threes when they shouldn't, and it's just causing a lot of turnovers and sloppy play in this game. Nick Bennett driving inside. It's, his shot is blocked, but Ray gets the re uh, Rayshon King gets the rebound. Calaire driving against Ricky Ferguson, dumps it off to Bennett, who's double teamed. Gets to the Keith Fitzgerald, who loses and then regains control of the ball. So a lot of passing back and forth, and finally Rayshon King tries to drive to the hole, and and he's gonna draw the foul. Mustang ball. As Nick Otto inbounds the ball. Gets it to King outside to Calaire. Nate Otto's shot is an air ball. Unfortunate shot for him. Creek Crazies taunting Dale Parker yet again. As Lee outside the arc. He's just bringing a lot of pain upon himself that he really shouldn't, or that he didn't need to. And Lee's three point attempt is up and is no good going out of bounds off the foot of a Fuquay player. Middle Creek ball. One fifty three left to go in this third quarter. Middle Creek still up by 19. Nate Otto inbounding it to Calaire. Calaire bringing it up the court. Driving against Lee, goes up against a triple team and gets the layup. As Lee brings it up, and this Fuqua uh, student section is getting pretty quiet now. Yeah, it's you know it's uh le less Fuqua people came out tonight than I expected. I mean they, I mean they, it's a decent uh, away crowd. They filled up a couple rows, but. Less than I expected. They usually travel in force. It is a school night, um, but you know, a lot, lot of Middle Creek people are out, and that's what matters, and that's what we like to see. So, they auto inbounds the ball to Kevin. Kevin Calaire bringing the ball up the court. Claire driving against Lee, passes it to Fitzgerald, who's at the top of the key, and makes a bad pass, turns it over. McNeil's gonna bring it up, defended by Otto. 
Lee pump fakes. McNeil takes the three-point shot and misses, and it's rebounded by King. And on that last rebound, uh, Rayshon King and Nate kind of ran into each other on that little miscommunication. That's just silly, silly things that shouldn't be happening under the basket. Meadow Creek ball, raised it. Ray uh, King is going to inbound for the Mustangs. 104 to go here. Mustangs up 50 to 29. Claire takes the deep three from the corner, misses, and McNeil gets the rebound for the Bengals. Lee makes the deep pass, number four, who, for the Bengals. That's Adam Fairtow who misses. Ray's going to get the long pass for the Mustangs and misses on his layup attempt but draws the foul and he's going to take two so, let's see you know we can get over our slump of free throws now I know Brandon hit two free throws before so let's see if we can keep it going and get the streak uh, further on they've had a little more success in the second half than they did in the first you know maybe it was something that Kush said to them and his first attempt rims out 47 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Ray lining up for his second attempt. It's up and it's no good as well. Nate Otto though hustling for that rebound. Gets it to Nick Bennett. Pass to Fitzgerald under the basket. Who goes for and Nate Otto again. He's all, all over. Uh, can't come down with a rebound, but he's showing his hustle out there, doing an excellent job out there, trying to pull the rebounds down for the Mustangs. Had so much momentum on that last play that he uh, ran into the stands a little bit. Yeah, he climbed a few of those. Luckily, they were empty. Didn't have to run anybody over. Inbounds pass. Bad pass. Fitzgerald gets it and lays up the easy two points. 52-29. Mustangs are leading. 30 seconds and counting here in the third quarter. That was a nice little Euro step that he did. And good pass to McNeil who can't convert on the layup. And Ray comes down with a rebound. Claire bringing it up and puts up the shot. Can't get it. Rebounded by Bennett. And it's going to go out of bounds to Middle Creek. Mustang ball. Middle Creek debuting some new uniforms from last year. Looking looking fresh in their new uniforms. Yeah, I know they bought some new uniforms over the summer and they gave their old varsity uniforms to JV to use as their home jerseys. Inbounds pass to King, whose shot is a no-go. And congratulations to the JV team for their win tonight. We watched them play earlier tonight. Um, so congratulations to them. Future Middle Creek basketball right there. Ray, is gonna, Ray King is going to go to the line again. Hopefully he can sink these. His first attempt is good this time. Ten seconds left to go in the third quarter. Mustangs have a very comfortable lead here. After a lot of back and forth in the first half, it's been all Middle Creek the second half. Pulling away here with over a 20-point lead. Ray's second attempt is no good. Nate Otto tipping it out of bounds. It's going to be Bengal ball. Bird's going to inbound it. Yeah, Fugler's going to hold it for the last shot of the quarter. Yeah, but good defense. And they force the turnover. Fitzgerald bringing it up. Three, two, one second left. Fitzgerald puts it up. And it's no good. And that's going to bring an end to the third quarter. And I think we're about to see the roller coaster cheer by the Creek Crazies. That's their uh, signature thing they started doing. I believe it was last year. And the cheerleaders are also out, out to perform. Yeah, they, they started that a lot last year and years past. And our uh, cheerleaders, always, always excellent. Won a couple state titles. Very impressive job.
that's always fun to see Middle Creek, uh, the Creek Crazies moving in unison, and the Orange Crush is mocking them because uh, for whatever reason. For whatever reason, uh, nobody knows. <laughs> so that that brings an end to the third quarter, and we start the fourth and final quarter of play here. Eight minutes of basketball left. Middle Creek with a comfortable 24-point lead over the Bengals. And after a little bit of a few rough, rough patches in the first half, they've kind of found their groove a little bit, hitting more free throws, doing a, playing better basketball. And, it's confusing on what they're saying. Yeah, I uh, haven't been able to figure out a lot of the things that they're yelling. As McNeil looking for an open man, and he held it too long, I believe. Well, they, they have a thing in high school sports where, you know, if you're guarded too long by one defender for five seconds, it's a uh, turnover. So that's going to turn it over. That's going to be middle quick ball. Wilson inbounding it to Quentin Ray. Slowing it down here. No reason to take any more risky three-point shots. As he goes for the attempted alley-oop with Brandon Hooks, that would have been beautiful if they had converted that. Uh, but may, we might see another alley-oop attempt before the night's over here. Having a little fun after, when they have a comfortable lead here. Don't want to get too cocky or, conf or uh, confident is the better word. Don't want to get too overconfident. But uh, it's, you know, it's, it's nice to see him have a little fun out there. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, they have a lot of athletic players on this team. I mean, I've seen at least five of their players dunk the ball in practice or either in a game. And Brandon's first attempt swishes through, putting the Mustangs up, extending their lead even more. Hooks gets ready for his second attempt here, and it goes through. He, he looked like he knew that was good from the moment it left his hands. Lee bring it up and you know you look at Lee uh, number 12 for Fugue Devontae Lee number 5 Ricky Ferguson they're kind of uh, and, and number 4 Adam Ferto they're a little bit they're a little bit smaller compared to some of the Middle Creek guards that they're going up against you know I think that may be kind of the deciding factor here they're going up against bigger guards not necessarily more and they're they're and over and back on Fuquay to be Middle Creek ball, but just maybe maybe a little, maybe a little bit of the size difference. Yeah, no, they might be really small, but they are very quick. I know uh, number twelve, Devonte Lee is very quick. I've I've played basketball with him at the YMCA, and you know he's very quick. So as Marvin drives in, in uh, drives, and he, he's called for the foul. I think he did a little bit of push off there. Mm -hmm. The refs got him for that. I interrupt you, can know. Oh, yeah, yeah, the number twelve. I had, to, I did play with him at the YMCA. And, you know, he's very quick. He is very, he is very athletic, and you know, I mean, he can play with everybody else. I mean, he's very talented. As Ferto lays it out, misses, rebounded by Marvin, who's bringing up real quick, goes for the layup, and misses, rebounded by Kamari, who's his putback attempt is a miss. So that's something I think Kushner's gonna wanna practice is those put those simple putbacks. Yep. Because there's been a lot of those that they should have had as Devontae Lee gets the layup, closing the gap a little bit. Mustangs up 55 to 31. Six and a half minutes to go here in the game. Brandon Hooks lays it up. Two more points for the Mustangs. Ferguson takes the deep three, misses, and they just have not had any success from behind the arc tonight. Bad pass by Bobbitt, and it's turnover again. Bengals are going to bring it up the court. Bird takes the long jumper. Fifty-three to thirty-three, fifty-seven to thirty-three. Excuse me. Middle Creek leading five fifty-one to go here in this game 
And Middle Creek, you know, like, like we said, it was going back and forth a lot in the first half. But this, this is more more like we, what we like to see, a very solid win over our rivals. Um, that's what we like to see. This is a very good one to start the season off for Middle Creek and uh, you know, try to get the tempo set. Tempo, excuse me. Both student sections going back and forth. It's just fun to watch here as we come out of the timeout. As Tucker Daniel, number 44, is in the game for the first time tonight for the Mustangs. Uh, Kush and Michael Beam, number 11, is in as well. Kushner putting in some of the guys that don't play as much. Um, and Austin Oglesby is also in number 15. So Kevin Collier is going to line to shoot one. One and one. It's a real fun atmosphere here tonight. Everybody it always, always gets loud. It's, you know, the, the, the crowd noise is amplified so much compared to football, you know. You know, this is, it's, uh, the stadium here is just very packed in and not very, you know, open, expanded, to, like the football field. No doubt as Kevin gets set for his second shot. It's up and it's no good. Rebounded by McNeil. Fuquay trying to push the tempo a little bit here as they need points and they need, they need a lot of points fast. As Lee goes, drives in and draws the foul. He's going to go to the line as well. And another, Middle Creek's also uh, tamped down in, on their fouls a little bit in the second half. As you know, Devontae Lee shoots two. And it's his first one is good. Fuquay now at 34 points. Middle Creek up by 24. His second shot is no good. Bounces off the back side of the rim. Rebounded by McNeil, whose putback attempt is no good. Bird gets that rebound, and his putback attempt is no good. And Tucker Daniel intercepts the bad pass. Calera makes an errant throw. And turnover again. Fuquay is going to have it. Lee driving against Fitzgerald. Out to Ferto. The long three. Misses. Rebounded by Daniel. Out to Beam, who's working against Ferguson. Stepped out of bounds. And that's going to be Fuquay ball. It looks like uh, Kush is going to call a timeout. Yeah, 5.07 left to go here in this game. Middle Creek up 58 to 34. And Middle Creek is going to take a timeout and gather their thoughts a little bit. Take a breather. You know, they've been running hard all game. Yeah, you know, they've, they've had the hustle, you know, the two charges that we've seen, you know, just out hustling Fuquay in, in every category tonight. And you know, like we talked about, we traveled to Garner on Friday. That's going to be a very intense game because they have a little bit of a smaller gymnasium. So, you know, that, and it's going to be packed in there as well. You know, you got to, that's a very intense rivalry. That's always... A lot of a very emotional game, whether it's football or basketball. Those games are always real emotional. Um, fans are kind of at, e at odds with each other a lot. Players don't necessarily they respect each other, but maybe not necessarily like each other. And it's always a very intense game. And it's going to be a, packed in there. I heard a lot of Garner fans are going to come out to that game. Now, Middle Creek's going to come out in force. Should definitely be. A uh, tough game for the Mustangs. For Toe, bad pass recovered by Bird. Inside to McNeil, who tries to lay it up and doesn't get it. But he gets the foul, so he's going to go to the line. McNeil a little upset with himself. Wishes he could have the, that two points. And they, Fuquay could use those two points right now. His... First attempt is good. Fuquay still down 58 to 35. Got an uphill battle to go here in the last five minutes of play. His McNeil's second attempt 
is good as well. Pequay calls a timeout to gather their thoughts, try and get it together, try and stage some sort of comeback here. And down by 22 points late in the game. Not impossible, but definitely improbable here. Well, yeah, no, a comeback here would be, you know, maybe like front page of the news kind of thing. Like that'd be that'd be outstanding. I mean, that'd be incredible for Fuqua to pull out a 22-point comeback in under five minutes or just about five minutes left. But I mean, they they haven't had the three-point shooting tonight that they would have liked, and you know, if they hit more from behind the arc. They could still be in this game, you know. I mean, that I think that's been the key that separated them. I mean, they've played decent in the key and uh, in the paint, but when they take those shots from behind the three-point line, they just Fuqua just hasn't had much success. Middle Creek hasn't been stellar, but they've been able to get some of those to fall, and that's been the difference maker. I mean, a couple threes would have Fuqua in this game. I mean, a, a 12 or a, even a 15-point deficit is much more manageable. as Michael Beam gets ready to inbound the ball from Middle Creek. Well covered by Dubois and bounces off the foot of a Bengal defender. And Fuquay gets it to go. I believe that was Dubois who got it to go and he was fouled as he shot. Michael Beam on the foul. Little inexperience showing there maybe. Yeah, I think he's just, you know, kind of nervous. I mean, this is the first, you know, varsity minutes of his career, you know. And, and the free throw does not fall. Beam gets the rebound. Dumps it off to Claire. Who's the most, ex uh, one of the more experienced ones on the court for the Mustangs right now. Looking for Fitzgerald, who runs along the baseline, gets it to Daniel, who gets the easy layup. And making the most of the minutes that Kushner gives him as McNeil's three-point attempt is an air ball and falls well short of the basket. And that was one of the, I mean, even that was a good shot, but you know, that was just unfortunate for him. It just I mean, felt, he has played a good game tonight. It, he has, you know, I think he's been one of the bright spots for the Bengals. As Beam's pass, it, it was uh, intended for Daniel, and Daniel's tall, but not tall enough to get that pass, unfortunately. 4.22 left to go in this game. Mustangs up 60 to 38. Kevin Kaler inter intercepting uh, the pass attempt for McNeil. But it uh, bounced off his hands. He couldn't maintain possession. So the few player crowds getting a little. Uh Getting a, little, uh, getting a little rowdy, but a little uh, rough. I think they're just having a little fun right there. I think because they know that it's a long shot for them to win, so they're having a little fun. Nick Bennett bringing it up the court, dumps it to Daniel, but he can't make the shot fall. Daniel's gonna bring it end to end, goes up for the layup, and can't get it again. He's missed a lot of those, those short, you know, the layups and the short putbacks. He hasn't been able to make those. You know, like when you're running full speed, you know, up and down the court, it is very hard to to convert on some of those tough layups like that one. Easier said than done. Yeah. As McNeil is going to go to the line, as he did, he didn't get the layup, but he did draw the foul. So misses his first attempt. Fuquay down 60 to 38 with 4:06 to go in the game. McNeil for his second attempt and gets it to fall. Putting Fuquay at 39. Bennett's going to inbound the ball for the Mustangs. And looking for an open man. Ray Sean King is back into the game, as is Nate Otto. Ray going end to end with it. And he goes up for the layup. Can't get it to fall, but he's going to go to the line for two. As Fuquay is at 10 fouls right now. So I believe that that's an automatic two at this point, right? Yeah, well, if they if it, they foul him on purpose or it's just, you know, like an accidental foul, they, they automatically shoot two. And Middle Creek's pretty much up there, too. I mean, they just need one more foul and they're yeah. shooting two, too. 
as Ray's first attempt falls. A little substitutions by the Bengals as Devontae Lee comes into the game. Ray King looking to sink his second shot in a row. It's up and it is no good. Bounce off the back of the rim. Fugway initially got the rebound. Ray tried to steal it away and a foul was called. So now Fugway will shoot two free throws. So just like that, Middle Creek is now at, at the 10 foul mark. And who, uh, who else than Dale Parker going to the line for the Bengals? Number 24. Shot is up and it's no good. Seeing a little playing, a little bit of playing time tonight. His second attempt is good. Nate Otto inbounding it for to Bennett. He drives up court, spinning out of the reach of one defender. Gets it to Ray King, driving inside, dumps it off to Daniels, and. Daniel misses his shot, but is fouled, and he will go to the line. So, in the matter of 16, the, you know, the past 15, 16 seconds, we, we've, this is our third, I believe our third or fourth guy to go to the line. And Daniel's first shot is no good. Both teams have just been struggling from the free throw line all night long. I mean, the only person I think we've seen that hit two consecutive free throws is Brandon Hooks. Yeah, he, Brandon has uh, you know, props to Brandon. He's done an excellent job from the free throw line. And Daniel's second attempt falls. 62 to 40, Middle Creek up on Fuquay. Devontae Lee driving along the baseline, dumps it outside. Dale Parker misses his shot. Rebounded by Bird, who gets the putback. So Fuqua is going to call a timeout here. Try and put something together down 20 points with three and a half minutes to go here. And what what have you, what are your thoughts on the second half so far compared to how uh, both teams played in the first? I know you know Middle Creek played. A lot better the second half than they did the first half, you know, with the less turnovers. You know, I mean, they did, I'm pretty sure they did shoot the ball a little bit better in the first half, but, you know, they've just out, they've outplayed Fuquay in the second half, you know, with just more hustle. It seems like they wanted it more than Fuquay did. I mean, definitely a lot of room for improvement by both squads. I know Kushner's going to, I mean, you know, talk about the, the free throws and the turnovers, a lot of the basic things just. A lot of that's mental stuff. I mean, it's it's no easy task to sink a free throw when you have uh, the opposing team screaming fans all in your head and in a big game. Or, you know, like the putbacks we were talking about, you know, you just need to mm -hmm. practice those, you know, just keep going at them just like they are in a game, and, you, you know, you'll eventually just get it right. No doubt as Otto slings it to Nate Bennett, who gets it in stride and hits the layup. Beautiful play. <laughs> Nate Otto slinging it down court. Nate Bennett getting it in transition against a double team by Fuquay. As double dribble called on Barian of Fuquay. And Nate Otto is going to rebound, uh, inbound it to the Mustangs. Nate Otto's impressed. And another long pass, this time to Ray King, who gets it in stride. Goes up, his shot is blocked. Rebounded by Barian, and Ray King steals it again. Dribbles up, misses it, and Daniel gets the putback. So, 66 to 42, Middle Creek leading, 3.08 to go here as Devontae Lee goes up, misses the shot, and is pushed, and he will go to the line. And it was number fifth, that was Oglesby on the foul. 3.07 to go here. And. Lee's first attempt falls. As Middle Creek makes some uh, substitutions. 
And Ray's going to come out of the game here after missing. You know, those, those two layups, I think he wants those back. A little confusion there. Just you know, They were missing one player at first, and then they just have to just bring somebody on and just get it all settled. As the second free throw attempt is a miss, rebounded by the Mustangs. Nate Bennett's going to spin around Varian, puts it up, misses, and it's it's rebounded by the Bengals. Dale's gonna, Dale Parker's going to bring it up, and it's stolen away by Nick Bennett, who's going to drive against two Fuquay defenders and gets the layup to fall. 2.43 left to go here. Middle Creek up 68-43. to 43. Got a commanding lead right now as Ferguson puts up the tall three-pointer misses. Rebounded by Tucker Daniel, who dumps it off to Michael Beam. Gets it to Nate Otto. Nate Bennett taking the deep three and drills it from the corner. Beautiful shot. And Middle Creek is on fire right now. I, don't, I, I just don't see Fuquay catching up right now with 2.15 left to go here. Middle Creek up 71 to 43. Dale Parker driving against Michael Beam. Puts the shot up and it's blocked. And I believe it was called for the travel. Or they, no, they called the foul on that. They, they called the foul. Nick, Nick Bennett's one of those players where, you know, if he gets a couple layups then hits one shot, he will not miss the rest of the game. He When he, we played against, I believe it was Broughton in that Glaxo Smith Klein holiday tournament, he hit, you know, a huge three to, you know, tie the game up. And, you know, that was just one of the key plays of that game. You know, he'll hit him when he needs to. He's one of those clutch players. And Parker's first free throw attempt, attempt is a miss. This is the second time he's going to the line. He's one for three tonight, I believe. Going up for his second attempt. And Co Fuquay coach is trying to get something sorted. He's, he's uh, Hartzell is a little confused on the sideline as to um, you know when he's supposed to be subbed in. So a little confused in there. So Parker's lining up for his second shot. And it is a no-go. One for four in the night for free throws. And good job by Lee to keep it in bounds for the Bengals. And it's going to be Mustang ball. Ezekiel Jones caught the pass. It was a great pass by Lee to keep it in bounds. And Jones put it up but just couldn't get it to fall. So Beam's going to inbound it for Middle Creek. 2.02 left to go here. Clock's running 71 to 43. Middle Creek leading. Rayshawn King bringing it up, driving hard, dumps it out to Oglesby, who takes a, a three, and it just is a little off. As Tucker Daniel attempts to get the rebound, and Fuquay just wrestled it away from him. I didn't see who the other player was that wrestled it away from him, but. Well, Fuquay is shooting too now, so. So Daniel was called for the foul, and we have yet another so we're yep. going to see number, number number 24 again, that's, Dale Parker. Dale Parker going up for the second time in recent memory. And he sinks it. They just love putting him at the line. Two for five at, for, on the night. Looking for his second attempt. 149 to go in the game. And his second attempt falls. So shooting 50%, not bad from the free throw line. It's not good, but yeah, it, I mean, can, it can be improved. As Ray King brings it up, dumps it to Beam, looking for Oglesby, who takes it way outside the arc. Back to Beam. There's a lot of good passing right now as King drives. Oglesby pump fakes, gets it to Beam, mishandles it a little bit, but regains control. Hits Ray on the baseline, and Ray, Ray gets the layup. 73 to 45. Middle Creek leading 113 and counting left to go in this game. Middle Creek has this game all but wrapped up. Tony Hayes in the game for the Bengals for, I believe, the first time tonight. Yeah, it's the first time for him. And Cameron Averitt's attempted pass is way over the head of his teammate and goes out of bounds. And Oglesby inbounding it to King. Who's going to let the clock run out, or uh, run down, excuse me, 52 seconds to go here. Lee playing defense on King. 
King making his move, looking for an open man. Gets it to Oglesby who makes the, the jumper, the off balance jumper and gets it to fall. 75 to 45, 35 seconds to go here. Lee has the ball and gets it stolen by King. Hits Fitzgerald in transition, lays it up, misses. Rebounded by Beam, gets it to Daniel who lays it up for another two points. 21 seconds to go in the game. Devontae Lee bringing it up for the Bengals. Fitzgerald playing defense for the Mustangs, not letting Devontae go anywhere. 10.1 seconds to go here. Fitzgerald's called for the foul, and Lee's going to go to the line. Middle Creek up 77 to 45. Just a very dominant. Uh, uh, the scoreboard indicates a very dominant performance by the Mustangs. I mean, we outscored them, but I wouldn't necessarily call it a dominant performance. I mean, just between all the turnovers and some of the missed free throws. I mean, it, it was not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination, but definitely it just shows where some there's room for improvement and where uh, Kushner can, what fo Kushner can focus on in practice in the following days leading up to uh, the Garner game on Friday and in, in the future and the rest of the season. So Ray King's going to be called for the over and back with .6 seconds left to go. I believe they, they called a foul on Dale Parker. Oh. It looked like it was going to be an over and back, but I guess uh, Parker forced forced uh, King into that situation. Well, I think he tipped it out, and that's why they, they didn't call it an over and back. So .6 left to go. Ray King's going to the line for the Mustangs. Mustangs up by 30. His first attempt is no good. So Ray taking the last free throw of this game and the, you know, the last play of this game. Point six seconds left and nothing else you can really do. Getting ready for his second attempt. It's up and it's no good off the back of the rim. Rebounded by Averett as the buzzer sounds and that is game middle creek will get the win 77 to 47 they middle creek wins their season opener uh over fuquay great performance by mustangs good game by fuquay as well um and we play garner on friday and i believe we're gonna do i believe we're broadcasting the girls game the women's game on friday as well but we're gonna take a quick break, and we'll be right back for some post-game post stats. You're watching the Sports Block. We'll be right back. Back for post-game statistics following the Middle Creek 77-47 win over Fuquay for Middle Creek. Brandon Hooks was the leading scorer with 13 points. And for Fuquay, Evan McNeil led the way with 11 points for the Bengals. And it was, we look at rebounds, there's a big discrepancy between uh, the total amount of rebounds by both teams. Middle Creek had 22 rebounds, whereas Fuquay only had 11. 
So that, that was a big difference between, you know, pulling down those re those boards and converting off of them. Middle Creek coming off with a big win. Um, 19 turnovers by both teams. A lot, a lot of sloppy play. But we're going to return to you on Friday for the women's game. And for PJ Bell and Tony, I'm Matt Kimball. You've been watching the Sports Block, and we'll, we'll see you again next time.